Okay, and we're going to start with um, public comments. Amy. Hi, Amy. Welcome back. Hi. Um, Hi, Amy. Hi, everybody. So I have three different things, and I'm really sorry for the background noise. Can you hear me okay? Yes, I can. Okay. Um, so I have three different things that I would like to share today. Um, one is an update on the Rocky Hill Greenway Accessible Unpaved Trail Project. Um, I noticed it's not on the agenda and between last month's meeting and this month's meeting, I got information from Carolyn Mish um, about the update. So um, if I can just take you know, a couple minutes to share that information with you all so that you know what's happening with that project. Um, so it's a multi-phase project. Mm -hmm. um, and they did, the, the city, the planning department um, did hire engineers um, that finalized the design plans in July, actually. Um, and so at this point, uh, she said they're able to issue an RFP for construction based on the designs from that firm. Um, one complicating factor is um, accessible parking that is near enough at one end of the trail or the other. So that is something that um, the planning department and the engineers, I think, are still having to figure out. Um, so that, um, that's, so I just wanted to come back because I know Keith brought it up in last meeting and there were questions about funding. There is $120,000 that was um, put towards this project or is being able to put towards the project. Um, so that was one thing. Um, the second thing is I had asked, I and I don't remember exactly, but I believe at the June meeting, July, September, and October, I had during public comments asked the commission for an update on this project. Um, and it was in November that, you know, Keith brought some information to us. Um, and I, I just need to bring it back to the commission that it felt like a, a lack of consideration on the part of the commission towards a member of the public um, to repeatedly not address um, a question being brought before the commission. And I, I guess I'm asking um, the commission to come up with a plan or steps, a process of how you address questions or concerns from the public um, that, are, that are brought before you so that things are addressed, so that people feel heard, so that people um, continue to come before the commission as a resource um, for people with disabilities in this area. Um, so that was the second thing. And the third thing, um, I'm gonna try to summarize uh, over the last, since June actually, um, I have been working with uh, the Department of Public Works and the planning department in getting a curb cut in front of my house so that I can have an accessible parking spot on our property um, to access my house as I transition to using a wheelchair. And the process has been really informative. Um, it, is, it has been cumbersome um very time consuming um and i it 
and and I've bumped up against the code, city code. And so it really leaves me with questions about how we as a city um, can do things differently so that people in our community with disabilities, when, when we are interacting with any department in the city, we feel welcomed, we feel seen, we feel supported, we feel heard. Um, and because um, the system is not set up that way, there's, there's room for improvement is what I discovered. And so I'm bringing this in, you know, kind of general brushstroke ter terms to you um, and kind of laying it before you to say, what can we as a city do um, so that people with disabilities feels good about their interactions with the city system. So that, you know, because, you know, I've, I've reflected a lot about this. Um, right now, things are set up equally so that everyone is, you know, treated equally when they come before a city department and equality you know, it's it's not the same thing. If things are equal, it doesn't mean they're equitable. And so, but what, you know, then it gets really messy. What do you do with that? What does that look like? What does that mean? How do, but so anyway, it just, it really makes me wonder how we as a city can do things differently um, so that people with disabilities are accounted for so that they're taken into consideration. Um, thanks for listening. Thank you very much for your thoughtful comments. Does anyone have um, any any um, response for Amy? Anything? Any thoughts on what she said? I just have one Ma comment. Okay, Michael. I was thinking Amy said she wanted a curb cut for parking for her house. I was thinking, as a committee, we could listen to the public if we put out a survey, maybe ask a question in the Chronicle, who would who would need curb cuts, that they could make a waiting list of people that could have curb cuts that needed it as well, that the interest would be shown and the places that needed it the most would be heard probably. To have ex extra curb cuts where they were needed, just people's input on where they would like some if they need some extra ones. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Meg, uh, did, Meg, did you have any public comments or no, you didn't? Okay. Were there any other public comments? Sorry, I was not sure. Okay. Yeah. Oh, you do have one. Okay. Sorry, I didn't see your hand. Yeah, no, that's fine. Um, actually, I wasn't intending to speak, so you're maybe reading my mind a little bit. Okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> I just wanted to echo Amy's uh, comments about the trail. I um, I have spent a long time advocating for this trail in this city. It's been well over three years and in one form or another. And I have to say that um, my experience working on this, uh, advocating for this trail in this city has been uniquely difficult compared to my experience advocating for trails in other areas of the state. And um, it has been, I will say, surprisingly difficult. And I am astonished that a plan has been in existence since July. And I've been asking to see a plan for this trail for probably a year. And nobody from the planning department, when I reached out for the planning department, shared that plan. Amy shared that plan with me. And that was sent to her from the planning department. And I'm astonished that parking hasn't been considered because parking is something that from the very beginning was identified by several members and groups in the public as this site doesn't have parking and this site needs parking to have a successful trail. And I can't reiterate enough how much I think having a public forum about this trail so that everything is out there so that people can comment and people can see it. I can't express enough how important that is because keeping it out of the public feels like it's, it's exclusive. 
It excludes people who have this lived experience from giving that lived experience um, and the insight that brings to the planning department. I, I don't want us to spend $120,000 on, on one more unsuccessful trail in this city. And frankly, we have a history of unsuccessful attempts at accessible unpaved trails. Most of them have been paved over because of it. And I don't want one more unsuccessful trail in this city. Thank you, uh, Megan. Right. And thank you, Amy, too. I, I just want to say that I agree with both of you. And uh, just as as the chair, I'd just like to say that I think that we should have a serious discussion about about this about on our, on our next at our next meeting, like put it to put it on our agenda. I apologize that it's not on the agenda for this meeting. We have an election today and some other stuff to do, but um, but I, I really want want us to talk about it more. I really hope that we do. I also was not aware of the updates, like so I like because I don't have access to that information either. Like um, I did not know that there was a plan until Amy told me recently. Also. Um, so yeah, I think we should talk about it definitely. <clears throat> uh, okay, so I realized as we were doing the public comments that we didn't do a roll call yet. I think I should have done that earlier. So should we do a roll call, roll call real quick? Um, Emma? Cornwell? Here. Hi. Linda Kekos? Here. Rodney Kunath? Rodney? Okay. <clears throat> Councillor Marianne Barge. Yes, I'm here. Kathy Murray. Here. Uh, Marilyn Clare. Here. And Michael Morton. Here. Okay, cool. Um, and the next thing on the agenda is the approval of the uh, previous minutes from last month. Um, motion to approve. Seconded. Okay, awesome. Oh, oh uh, Jeremy. Um, yeah, sorry, did I, I um, did I do that too fast? No, you're asking for a motion, but people oh. are thinking that you're making the motion. Okay, so I, need... I, I know. I realized that was not clear. I'll make that yeah. clear. Um, uh, sure, I'll make the I'll make the motion to approve the previous minutes. Seconded. Okay, thank you, Emma. Sorry about that, Keith. I realized that wasn't that clear. Um, okay, so the next thing is to review the duties of the officers. Yes, yeah, so uh, we do have uh, a, a um, uh, I'm getting some feedback, excuse me. Um, yeah, so we do have um, elections of officers today. And so uh, just to review and some someone had asked uh, just to go over the duties of the chair and the vice chair. Um, so really, um, you know, the chair, as, as, you, as you see Jeremy doing, really kind of facilitates the meeting. Um, and whoever that is, they sit down with me and the, and the vice chair to kind of go over the agenda. So, you know, taking feedback from this meeting like Jeremy did and saying, oh, I think we should discuss that at the next meeting, but really thinking about the strategy of what we want to do. Um, you know, it's it's one thing to talk about things. Then we, was also, okay, what's the role of the committee or the commission, excuse me, on kind of creating a policy or creating some sort of language or um, interact with other departments. Um, and then really kind of the chair sets the tone for the discussion. Uh, you know, we're, right now we're just discussing things and we're talking uh, and we want to be civil, uh, but we also want to make sure that we are following open meeting law as commission members you are um, considered by the state a special municipal employee that means that um, you all all the things that uh, all the rules and regulations for ethics uh, that a staff person like myself has to follow for open meeting law you have to uh, do as well um, so the chair needs to be cognizant of that and making sure that um, the meeting is following those procedures and then the vice chair um, you know if the chair cannot attend the meeting then the vice chair would uh, facilitate the meeting um, and they also uh, sit down uh, uh, over meeting with myself and the chair to discuss the um, agenda items um, so those are the biggest things um, that the chair and the vice chair do. Um, before going on, does anyone have any questions about that? Okay. 
Um, so uh, I did receive um, two nominations for the chair and the vice chair position. Um, for the chair was Emma Cornwell and for the vice chair was Kathy Murray. Um, I guess the question is right now, do the, uh, do the current nominees accept mm -hmm. their nomination? Um, Keith, I actually wanted to re-nominate Jeremy um, if, if nobody else was interested or nominated. And um, I am flattered to be nominated, but don't feel like it's quite within my, my capacity to be chair. Okay, so you're, uh, you are removing yourself from the nomination? Yes. Okay. And nominating Jeremy. Yeah. Okay, so we have a nomination for Jeremy for a reappointment. Um, and Kathy, do you accept your nomination? Oh, I uh, think you're on mute. I also have very unstable internet, so just <laughs> bear with me. Um, I would, but in light of that, I'm wondering if Emma would consider being uh, renominated for vice. Um, I, I definitely would, but I also feel like if you're interested, like if other people kind of want a more official voice, um, I definitely don't want to take, uh, take, take too much space. Oh, uh, Councilor LaBarge? Yes. Kathy, would you consider being a chair and would Emma consider consider being a vice chair? Mm -hmm. Kathy? Um, I, I would consider being the chair. My reservation is that um, is that I um, I'm trying to figure out how to phrase this delicately. I I don't actively have a disability. I do feel like the people, someone in that role should be someone who experiences the things that we talk about, which mm -hmm. I don't experience on a daily basis. So that's my reservation about that. Mm -hmm. I would consider mm -hmm. vice chair as supporting that person, but I don't think I would consider chair. Does anyone else have any thoughts or nominations? Um, I guess I don't, I, I, I can I, do, do I have, can I nominate someone or uh, I, yeah. I, I enjoy, I, I, although I'm, I, I, I guess we'll have a vote on it. I, I would love to also work with Kathy. That sounds awesome. Great. Also, also great, but I, I do really enjoy working with Emma. So um, I would like to also nominate Emma for vice chair. Just, that's just my, my two cents. Mm -hmm. yeah. I would second that. All right. So it looks like we have uh, at least uh, um, trying to tr track the bouncing ball here. So it looks <laughs> like for yeah. for chair we have uh, Jeremy, and then for uh, vice chair we have Emma and Kathy. Is that my understanding? Yes. Okay. Uh, I'll, I'll with if. Emma is willing to run for vice chair. I'll withdraw my nomination nation for vice chair, or however I do that. Decline, whatever. Okay. Uh, uh, Emma, uh, would you accept the nomination? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, so I, I guess, um, Jeremy, just because you're being nominated, I will, I will ask for um, a role. Um, uh, all in favor of voting for, uh, uh, sorry, let me let me do a roll call vote. Um, yes. uh, so I will go um, for, the, so this is for Jeremy to be the chair for next year. I'll just call on your name and you say yeah or nay. Uh, Marion Labarge? Yes. Uh, Marilyn Clare? Uh, yay. Uh, Linda Kekos? Yes. Kathy Murray? Yes. Michael Morton? Yes. Emma Cordwell? Yes. And Rodney Kunith? 
<laughs> okay, and yes. it looks like that is unanimous. Good job, Jeremy. Thank you, everybody. I really appreciate it. I love being the chair. <laughs> awesome. And then for Emma, we'll just go in order again. Uh, Councillor Marion Labarge. Yes. Marilyn Claire. Yes. Michael Morton. Yes. Kathy Murray. Yes. Linda Kekos. Yes. Rodney Kunith. Rodney. I think he put his hand up. I think okay. so, right? And uh, Jeremy. Yes. Very good. Motion passes. So, <laughs> congratulations, all. Awesome. Thank you. <laughs> Okay, great. The next we were going to talk about discussing, oh, this is an exciting uh, topic. Um, East Hampton recently made a public service announcement um, about shoveling snow. And um, so we thought that was an excellent idea of theirs and, and um, would like to discuss doing one of our own um, sometime soon. Um, Keith, do you want to, did you have, yeah. Wanna start? Um, yeah. So I just, um, uh, they, I mean, the cool thing is it was on YouTube and then, you know, the Hampshire Gazette wrote about it. Um, so already there, you know, it went from one one media to the other. Um, uh, so Council Bard shared with me. Uh, I saw it in the Gazette as well. Um, but you can, I did share the link in the uh, meeting minutes uh, or the agenda for this meeting. It's only about a minute long. Um, did everyone get a chance to read, watch that? Yes. So it's yeah, just images of you know snow and and sidewalks and everything else, and it's you know about a minute long of of uh, dictation um, from the disability commission themselves. Um, I reached out to them; um, they're happy to um, sh share with anything that we would need, but also um, I think the text um, you know we don't want to copy them word for word, but kind of the gist of that uh, message. Um, and then the um, Northampton Open Media, whenever we're ready to, um, if we have images or video, um, they would help us um, uh, kind of uh, put that together. Um, so I think, you know, the, the uh, I guess I'll take questions from that, but I think the best course of action would probably get, um, you know, uh, a subcommittee and, you know, work on some text for that. Mm -hmm. I'd love to be involved in the subcommittee. Um, I've had some film work experience, like I, I recently acted in a film, and so I know a lot. Uh, and I've also been in like I've worked in film previously before that, and so I've had some experience in like doing things on camera and like writing or you know writing f uh, text for like you know for film, so you know for for video. So we could, I think, I could get help. I'd love to be involved, basically, yeah, and maybe maybe be a speaker in the video if possible. Anyone have any thoughts on that? Or would any um, one like to join a subcommittee? I forget. Can there only be two people on a subcommittee or how many? But there just has to be uh, less than a quorum. Less than a quorum. Gotcha. Emma, you had something to say? Um. Yeah, I was just going to ask, Um. you know, I'm, has everybody on the commission seen the video? I think in the... Um, that we had uh, Keith and Jeremy talked about showing the video if people hadn't seen it. Oh, um, we could do that. Or is that possible to do on Zoom? Yeah, you can do I that. Think yeah. Yeah, yeah, you can do that. Okay, sure. Yeah, let's let's. I, I, let let me uh, let me pull it up here. <clears throat> Okay. 
Can everyone see that? Yep. Mm -hmm. yep. All right. I'm going to play it. Hopefully it works. Hey, Keith, I think the audio is working. It's not working. Yep. Okay. Just the audio. Okay. I'm I'm hearing it in my uh thing, so I don't know how to <clears throat> but you can see it though, right? Can see it, yeah. yeah. Perfect. Okay, well we should I mean we can it's just, we can just read the text. Um, I think I, I'm not gonna. Okay. Yeah. But... Okay, cool. Cool, uh, yeah. It's a, an excellent, excellent way to tell people what they have to do. It's yeah, it's a great, great way to get the message out, definitely. Right. So I guess, is anyone else interested in helping Jeremy kind of craft some language? I definitely can help Jeremy do that, but I'm also wondering, um, you know, I, I don't um, obviously want to steal anything, <laughs> um, but right. I'm wondering if we can use part of the, like, is there, I feel like what we would produce is probably going to be almost the same, just with maybe a different speaker. And do you know so where they got, do we know where they got the footage? Is that footage that they took for the commercial or is it, is it like stock footage? Uh, some of it is, uh, they, some of it is East Hampton. Some of it is Northampton. They try to get things that look like, but uh, if you look really closely, it's not all East Hampton. Okay, uh, I was wondering about that, yeah. But they filmed, I, get the, I guess they, they planned ahead and they filmed it last winter. Somewhere. Okay. Are we, are we wanting, are we make is our, sorry, is our goal, do you think, to get it done for this winter or for next winter? Like, are we, if we want to get it done quickly, right. it might be harder to get that, get that all, all that video. Sorry, Marianne? Yes. Also, to keep in mind, their ordinance is a little bit different than ours. Okay. If you look at ours and compare East Stampton, all right, I'm talking about the time involvement when you have to clear your sidewalks to full length. And I think I remember Keith talking about that, Keith, once before, of what we ask every homeowner to make sure that they clear those sidewalks full length within the, what is it, Keith? I can't remember now. I looked at that one. I think it's what, 20? 24 hours. Oh, 24 hours, right? Not 12 right, hours. Right. right. Okay. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Which is very detrimental. Plus, we have many people who have come forth when Bill Jawai and I designed that ordinance. It was due to people living at St. Michael's house who had crutches. And when they motivated, one leg would move first with the crutch and then the other one. And that was a resident that both Bill and I knew very well. 
he encouraged that ordinance. We worked tirelessly to make that happen. But if anybody should see this, keep this in mind if you put something up, okay? That if they see a sidewalk has not been shoveled to full length, that they are to make sure they get that house number and call the police. They then will go right to that, to that homeowner. That it's very successful. I've had many people do that. Same with businesses. If you see that they have not shoveled, you call a police. Well, Jeremy. Yeah. So I'm sorry, I just wanted to follow up on what she said. So you're suggesting that, are you saying that we should put that in the, in the commercial also that yes. you can call this yes. call this number or go to this website? Yeah, no, that's a good idea, definitely. Yep, if they see that within that 24 hours that that house is not abide by that ordinance of having it completely full length and shoveled, you call the police department and let them know that. Yeah, yeah. That's a good, good, good point. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, I, Keith? Yeah, I was going to say, Jeremy, I'll work with you on the language. I can um, uh, get that summarized and uh, the, the law um, and all that. So, um, cool. Yeah. The ordinance is, you can get right into the ordinance. Um, Jeremy, uh, Keith, how would people see this uh, commercial or what? Uh, put on YouTube, uh, and we can um, do like a press release um, from the mayor's office, or um, to get city other council. people to city council. Um, I mean, the Gazette they picked up on on the on the disability commission from East Hampton. So um, mm -hmm. yeah, there's multiple avenues. Yep. And you're right, Jeremy. We got to start on this right away. Yeah, yeah. If we want, like, if we want to get it out uh, this winter, we should definitely just get it done. I'd be glad to help you out with that. Okay, cool. Um, I'm wondering if we can ask to borrow the footage or the video and sort of, you know, rewrite some of the language and have a different speaker. But if we could ask permission from the the disability commission of East Hampton. Mm -hmm. to borrow it's a good idea well the cool thing is we have snow right now so uh, that's true we could just i don't we could take footage we, yeah, yeah i can i'll um i'll i'll reach out to open media right now uh and uh we can borrow the cameras and we can go do some film yeah. so. if you need me to take my wheelchair out i could i'd be happy to do that okay yeah. cool all right let's do it tomorrow Oh, I mean, oh. I'll, I'll contact them tomorrow and we'll, we'll yeah. see that. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right, cool. <laughs> um, uh, Marilyn? Yeah, could this uh, video also go up on the uh, City of Northampton's website? Yes, it should be. That's a great suggestion. <laughs> Definitely. Thank you, Marilyn. Uh, do we want to discuss the uh, next steps for the Crip Camp movie? Yeah, that's the on the next agenda, uh, next item on the agenda uh, for the Crip Camp movie. Um, I think the, the what we wanted to do was to reach out to other com other commissions in the area and see if, if um, they would want to be involved in in watching it. Or sorry, in um yeah, in watching the movie with us. Marilyn? Marianne, sorry. Yep. Anyways, I think when we're looking at getting this prepared, I know that our ADA coordinator suggested that he would do the mailing and notifying the groups. And we should do this like in spring, not now, in the spring sometime. Right, Keith? Yeah, I think closer to when we're going to do May, it. Yeah. Somewhere right there. yeah, yeah, that sounds good. Like when the weather's nicer, more people can come out. That way we don't have to worry about bad weather and 
transportation and so forth like that. And possibly holding it probably at the senior center in the big room, like we always have. Okay, um, so what is the what do you, what what uh, Keith? What do you think the next step is to get the process? I, mean, I think I can identify all the people, uh, get their contact information ready, and then okay. um, really just set a time uh, on my calendar when I sh uh, start reaching out to them. Uh, you know, the two people I've contacted before from Amherst and East Hampton have been really responsive, so. I'm, I'm a, I'm, I know someone, a friend of mine uh, is on the Holyoke Disability Commission. Mm -hmm. I, uh, mm -hmm. We could maybe invite them too. I think they'd be interested. Yeah. And also, yeah, the Holyoke, Chicopee also, they were very responsive when we had them come to ours. Yeah. Springfield, Chicopee, I, um, uh, Holyoke. So... East Stanton, we should invite them also. I think yeah. the, you know, uh, contacting them is fine, but I think, you know, are we asking them to mm -hmm. just show up or and uh, have a conversation with us or, you know, be part of the or part of the event or do you want them to, you know, take on some sort of leadership or helping with, um, you know, is there like a, a round table at the end, or do we want to have like a Q&A or a discussion, you know, do we want to have people facilitating that, um, things like that. So we should th think about the program, not just the watching the movie. Uh -huh. And so we're going to have it at the senior center. We're going to film the movie or we're going to watch the movie. Mm -hmm. So we'll get the movie, but then, you know, afterwards, do we just say goodbye or do we kind of have more of a facilitated kind of directed conversation and then who were who the people kind of doing that yes i like that idea yeah i like that idea too yes you'll open it right up for a discussion So did anyone have any thoughts on, you know, kind of the the different activities or um, discussion or um, things one might ask of the, dis the different disability commissions other than just kind of um, putting out to their members that uh, we're going to have this? Can we think about that and talk about that at our next meeting, Keith? So it'll be helpful. I'm just gonna, you know, say um, the, I guess the ask or the, you know, how are we gonna propose to the dis the other member uh, disability commissions, and how how we want them to be involved. Well, I think that their input would be very very valuable. Especially if we're going to be watching that movie and then having a discussion. There is so much to talk about of the rights of people with disabilities. I mean, we could ask each like chair of each commission that comes to you know, ask a question to the group or relate something from the film to something going on with their commission um, or, you know, something that they've talked about in their meetings. Um, but I also feel like if we're getting together that many different disability commissions, it could be useful. Um, you know, to talk about things besides the film, like 
you know, sort of what's going on with their commission, what are the issues in their town, um, how do we connect yeah. our commissions more? Uh, sounds good, Emma. Yeah, it sounds great. Right. I, I think it's very valuable. I think not just the chairs, but the people also who are on the commission from no matter what town they are. <clears throat> to be able to come forth and say, this is a problem we're having about people with disabilities and their rights. We need to move and work on the things that are very valuable for all involved in every town and every city of making sure that their rights are taken care of. And you can do that right after the film, let people talk. And I really disagree with it just being the chairs. The commission is the commission. And I think if say Marilyn was there and she wanted to raise her hand, she should be able to speak. We learned the value from everybody who would be there. No, sorry, I I agree. I just meant having each, I'd like to have a more organized discussion, just to have maybe the chairs facilitate the discussion or ask the question, but everybody obviously could participate and sort of answer the questions. Oh, definitely. I think it would work very smoothly, Emma. You know, we'll put everything in place. Yeah. They'll be well organized. We have a good ADA coordinator. He knows what should have to be done. He's asked for our voices and we're letting and trying to guide of what we feel is the importance of having this movie being shown and then a discussion after. So I can uh, draft up like um, a letter um, and send it to you, you know, at the next meeting, uh, ahead of the meeting, and we can yep. do some tweaking if you have language updates. Uh, just, it'll, to me, that's how, that's the best way I can do it uh, is get some feedback from you all. Uh, and once I get it out, we'll, we'll see kind of our, the deficiencies in my letter, so. Another thing that I would like to bring up, Keith, I'm very concerned hearing from a resident in our city of apparently asking to have a handicapped sign on her property because of her disability. And feeling that there's no communication going on amongst departments and we got to make sure that that's not happening here because when you call departments they should be working with a resident no matter what so as a counselor i have great concerns about that and i am going to make a couple of phone calls on that I feel every resident here in this city, if they make a call, they are asking for something of a disability that it should be looked at very, very carefully. Hearing from that resident today, she felt like she was shut right off. And you know what I have to say, I've heard other people say this too. And I think we need to open the door so that there is equity here. No matter who you are or what your disability is, if you need to have a temporary plate put on your property or whatever, whatever, it, they have to do it. People just don't ask for a temporary plate when there is a handicap involved in it. Um, so, Amy, you put up your hand. I'm not sure if I'm allowed to speak now since I'm part of the public, but Mary, uh, yeah, I think, yeah, that's fine. Go for it. I'm happy to reach out to you separately 
I didn't want to go into all the detail and kind of overtake right. the whole meeting because it's, you know, it's a lot of detail. Right. So I think um, what I communicated and what you heard don't match up. Okay. So I'd be happy to share more with you. I would like that. Uh, they, the, the people were responsive, uh -huh. but I, I think there's much room for improvement in the system of how people with disabilities are considered. Okay, why don't I give you my phone number so you can call me, Amy? Um, I sorry, I'm in. I'm multitasking. I'm trying to cook and listen at the same time. Oh. Um, could we, could we get it through Jeremy? Maybe could like could you give yes yeah. email or something, and so then we can connect that way, Marianne. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. Yeah, I can. I can give. I can give Councilor Labarge your email address. Is that, is that, that, that good? Jeremy. That would be great, Jeremy. Okay. Can okay. Yeah, no problem. Then I can give her my telephone number. Okay. Awesome. Thank you, Amy. Okay. Um, the next item on the agenda is to discuss accessing monitoring training from MOD. Yeah. Um. So both, uh, uh, so Massachusetts Office on Disability, uh, a lot of the information I get, a lot of the resources I get come from them. They're a small uh, unit out in Boston. Uh, they're part of the state government. Um, and they, re uh, anytime there's relevant kind of information, I kind of uh, send it along to you guys. But they recently had a community access monitoring training. Um, and this uh, helps certify people in the community, excuse me, to take surveys of buildings for accessibility um, and how to be better advocates for compliance. Um, and so it looks at like architectural stuff, communication, programmatic. So how someone would access um, city services and how things are designed um, that might exclude or include people mm -hmm. um, and then policy barriers to people with disabilities. Um, and so the training, you get a certification, but it's not like a legal certification. You don't, you're not, um, there's no authority behind it. Um, but, um, you know, it's, it's best for people to be, you know, effective advocates for accessibility. Um, so uh, I just want to say, you know, when I uh, will be having the training again soon in the next probably six months. Um, and I would just highly recommend everyone to go. Uh, I believe Kathy attended it. Um, Kathy, I don't if you I'm not going to put you on the spot, but if you want to say anything about it, um, I, I think uh, having your perspective would be, would be really good. Thanks, Keith. Um, I, I thought it was really valuable. What was really interesting to me is, you know, I, I'm trained as an ADA coordinator, but I didn't know a lot about the um, Architectural Access Board and their requirements. And it was really interesting hearing how those things interfaced. Um, and also I felt there was a, a lot of practical information in the training too, which is really helpful. So I'm looking forward to the advanced training when it happens. Do you have to take a test after that, Keith? Uh, no test, no. How, um, long, how long is the training on that? Uh, it's over two days and uh, about four hours each day. So total, total of eight hours. Okay. Um, and then they did some history of just the, how the Massachusetts Architectural Access Board, MAAB, <clears throat> and the ADA um, overlap um, in their history and how complex, um, depending on when your building was made, what type of renovations you're doing, the, the uh -huh. price of the building, all those other things. Um, and then when all, all these different complications. Um, but also I think the coolest part was hearing the, how the uh, MOD and um, the MAAB um, the history of that and how different advocates have um, the history of how they those things came to be and kind mm -hmm. of um, those people that have you know experience have lived experience with these things and they use that to kind of push the state 
to be compliant and they showed some ridiculous com you know uh -huh. um examples of uh buildings that were um you know like the accessible entrance at you know basically where you go to the dumpsters or something like just uh -huh. really obscene kind of um architectural um uh -huh. uh, decisions <laughs> but um wow. i I, I will definitely forward that to you guys and uh, remind you to take that okay, training when it comes about. Great. Thank you. Okay. Uh, were you going to say something else, Keith? Keith? Uh, no. no, if anyone had any questions, please. Um, I, I love to talk about it. Okay. Um, the next item is, I feel like this one is um, similar to what we were talking about yeah. when we were talking about Crip Camp and the, the uh, getting together with the other commissions. The next item here is to discuss public uh, possible roundtable with other disability commission. Um, what, is this a separate thing or like, I feel like we were talking about having a discussion with them. Yeah, I, th I think that was supposed to be up with the uh, Crip Camp. Right. Oh, I see. So you think they were just supposed to be combined. Okay. So uh, is there any other business not anticipated for the meeting that anyone would like to bring up? Councillor? Yeah, um, I have concerns here about safe streets. That's a huge issue everywhere. I think the line painting on the roads are critical, critical. Intersections, intersections that don't have curb cuts, Line painting is a must. That saves people's lives when there's that visibility of seeing the lines on the road. A lot of the lines, if you look at in the city, are disappearing. And that's a problem of safety, of people crossing. I just wanted to bring that up. I definitely agree, agree with you. Anyone else have any, have any thoughts? Yeah, I have one more. Yeah, go for it. Yes, I want to wish everybody happy holidays mm -hmm. and also a happy new year 2023. Stay healthy and safe. Yes, I would also like this to echo what Marianne said and happy holidays, everybody. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Um. Oh, Rodney, go for it. You had your hand up. Merry Christmas and a happy New Year. Thank you, Rodney. Same to you. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Um. Anyone else? <clears throat> okay. Um. Is there? Sorry, Maryland. Mar Maryland. Did you? Happy holidays. Oh, great. Same to you. Thank you. <laughs> Awesome. So is there a motion to adjourn the meeting? Move to adjourn. Okay. I second that. And Rod Rodney, second. Rodney seconds that. Okay. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Great. So uh, the meeting is adjourned. We'll see you all next month.